How's it going YouTube? Today we're going to talk about the Poland 4218A chainsaw. Now I've had this saw for about five years now. I've done a lot of work with it. I uh, use it at least twice a week or so and uh, <clears throat> it's never never been any kind of a problem. I've, I've cut a lot of firewood with this thing and also done a lot of landscaping as far as you know trimming trees and things like that. Let's take a look at it and I'll show you what I mean. Now again, you can see the dust and this is five years of use on this saw. It is the uh, Poland Pro PP4218A. It's 42cc, 18 inch bar. Okay, this is a two stroke chainsaw, so that means you do have to mix oil with your gasoline. It also requires bar oil if you're new to chainsaws. Uh, the bar oil will go in here and it keeps the chain oiled as you're sawing wood. That way the chain can move as it needs to. So your bar oil will go in here. And again, fuel. We do have to mix the fuel. It's a 40 to 1 ratio and what that means is 40 parts of gasoline to one part oil. So uh, 3.2 ounces of oil mix and I use premium gas in all of my small engines. Um, I've never had any problems with it. I don't foul spark plugs nearly as much as when I'm trying to use like the 88 octane grade fuel. Um, even in the mule here, premium fuel, and I've never had any problems with fuel. That might be a pointer for you, okay? But <clears throat> back to the saw, we do have a, a clutch brake here, kickback brake also, that keeps it in case the saw is trying to kick back on you. This thing should engage and protect you from the saw coming back into your body in any way. These things have a lot of power, so you have to be careful. And if, again, if you're new to chainsaws, the first thing I can say to you that's going to be the most important thing said here today is read that manual. It's going to tell you about all the safety features. Again, now, once we get this blade turning, these things are sharp and they're going to cut you. It'll go through blue jeans, it'll go through any material. So read your manual and make sure you understand what you have in your hands, okay? That's the most important thing. The rest of it, uh, work safely and you can get your work done. Now, again, I have had this all for five years. Um, I, one thing I refrain from is using the primer bulb. Now the manual is going to tell you, give this thing five or six pumps. And I don't do that on my small engines unless I absolutely have to. Turn the switch on, just by lifting up. Then you squeeze your trigger and you can pull your choke handle back, this little blue guy right here. Let me turn it around where you can see it. This is our choke and if you pull it all the way out and let go of the trigger of the saw, it'll stay in this out position. That goes to a high idle choke and it makes the saw easier to start. And as soon as you bump the trigger, you've seen the blue trigger go in, and that means the saw is ready to run, okay? So, again, now I don't use the primer bulb unless this thing absolutely, and I've never had a problem with it not starting, but I try to refrain from those. To me, it seems like you're putting too much pressure onto the carburetor seals that's inside of there and your hoses, and specifically in cold weather, if you get to get to pumping on this thing, uh, sometimes it can push a, a fuel line off or something like that. So that's just a personal preference. You guys follow the manual and do how, however you choose to there, okay? So again, I'm squeezing the trigger. I'm gonna pull my choke lever back and get it set. Now I always place this thing down on the ground and try to get my foot right here on the end. Uh, and it's made for that, but I try to get my foot down here. And then I make sure that the saw blade's not touching. They do suggest that you turn on the uh, chain brake here. That way the chain can't turn as you're starting the saw. All right? Now, if it's exceptionally cold outside, you're going to be better off if you get, get to where your blade's up off the ground and let that chain turn a little bit because all of this stuff is cold and it makes it harder for the saw to start. 
just simply be aware that as soon as I pull on this rope, that chain is going to start turning. Now, let me get you guys set up where you can see it start, and I'll show you how I got my foot down here. All right, so I'm going to put my foot right here on the edge of the trigger. You can see I have the chain up. And again, now it's okay if you go ahead and engage your chain brake here, but just so you know, as soon as this saw starts and we bump the trigger release, we don't want to be trying to rev it up when you have your chain brake engaged because that can do damage to your clutch. Okay, that, this is simply a warm up to get the saw going. So again, it's cold weather. I'm going to leave this disengaged so I can go ahead and get this thing to rotate a lot easier. Okay, so again, make sure your trigger guard or uh, chokes out. Couple pulls. Okay, so now it's attempted to start. I push the choke in just uh, one click. Okay, now I would allow that saw to warm up uh, until I'm just about ready to start sawing wood. Now with two stroke engines, one mistake is, yes you want it to idle, but you don't want it to idle for long periods of time. Because we are mixing oil to our gas and the spark plugs, and this really doesn't matter what small engine brand you have, Poland, steel, Husqvarna, etc. If you allow it to continue to idle for long periods of time, you're running a risk of fouling your spark plug. So <clears throat> now that I've got the saw started and, and kind of warmed up, I'm ready to start sawing firewood. Now before we start sawing wood, a couple things to mention here. Chain tension is very important for a chainsaw. Okay, You want to make sure, actually that's a little loose, I should not be able to pull uh, the chain guides up out of the bar. Okay, so that chain is actually a little loose. So we would simply loosen these two bolts here just a little bit and we have a tensioning screw and I will stick my uh, screwdriver in there and actually tighten that up until that chain is just snug. Now we don't want it over tight, but just snug enough to where I can't stretch it up out of the chain guide there. Okay, and then secondly, on all these chainsaws for your chainsaw bar, there's a little hole right here in the end of it. I'm going to try to turn that to where the camera can see it. But that is a, a greasing hole and they make a specific tool that you can squeeze grease down in there. Let me grab it and I'll show you. Do you take this guy right here, this is refillable so you can actually pull the cork out of it, put more grease in it and use it to continue to grease your saw bar. But it goes right in that detent there. You press this about two or three times and you will see grease come out around the, the tip of your bar here. There's a small sprocket in there that helps keep this guide roll or this chain rolling around the guide and keeps it true. And you only have to do that probably once or twice every four or five um, tanks of fuel. Now the reason you want your chain good and snug too is that will help the saw saw straighter and <clears throat> keep everything from wearing out quicker because if you have this chain rolling around, if you can turn that chain like that, you can do damage to your clutch and you're always doing damage to your bar. So I never take these too loose because I want a little bit of tension against them. But get it back there just enough to where when we turn the slotted screw here, it's going to pull our chain tight. Now see, I can't hardly pull that up and out of that guide and that's perfect. Now, get these things snug and I, I tighten them back and forth instead of just one all the way tight and then the other. I will go across both of these as you see me doing and snug those up. Don't over tighten them but make sure they're tight. OK, 
Okay. Now, and truly, I should have done all of that before I ever even started the saw. This is this is part of the warm-up process to make sure you you've got this thing ready to uh, go to work. Okay. So now our chain's tight. The saw is basically ready to operate. What you have to really watch for if you're new to chainsaws is once you start sawing something, you don't want the saw being able to kick back. That's what our chain brake does. If we're going to set this saw down, we don't want, if your chain's really loose, this chain will just continue to spin until you engage the brake or shut the saw off. Okay, now that gets real tricky if you forgot and set the saw down and step backwards on it uh, and the chain's turning, you know, now we've got a problem. So again, chain brake works, shut the saw off, you're going to set it down, that's always the best practice. Let's put this thing to work. Safety glasses and hearing protection is always a good idea. Now before I start sawing firewood, I do want to mention the importance of the gas mixture. Again, I said earlier, it's 40 to 1. What I do is I take my gas can. I do have a dedicated gas jug for the chainsaw or any pulling product because they will share the same fuel mixture. And I take this to the uh, gas station. I put exactly one gallon of gas in it. Um, <coughs> I mix my oil and I will shake it and make sure that I have mixed that oil thoroughly into the gas. And typically what I'll do is I'll pour a half a gallon of gas in there, make sure I get all my oil mix in, and then finish up to the rest of the gallon of gas. That way I know it's blended too. But always shake this stuff up. This is the life of any two-stroke engine. If you don't get this fuel mixture right, within 30 seconds of running your saw, you can do permanent damage. So get your fuel mixture right. And I always use, uh, for my Poland saws, I will use a Poland chainsaw mix and Poland bar oil. I'll leave that up to you, but it does seem like I get a little longer life out of it. Now, a friend of mine is a small engine mechanic, and he told me a lot of years ago that in any new engine, if you will take the time to break it in properly, it's going to last longer. And I got to say, I've always followed his advice and I do have really good luck with small engines. Um, it's not something that I have to do a bunch of repair on throughout the life of the saw, okay? I've never had to adjust the choke or the uh, idle speed on this or anything. So I'm gonna pass that information along to you. He said when they build small engines like this in order to test it for quality control at the factory, they will start the saw and run it for about 30 seconds. And as long as it passes that, then it's past their quality control. And then it is shipped to you or me, the consumer, okay? What he suggested is <clears throat> first start the saw, new out of the box, let it run for about 30 seconds, just like I done showing you how to start it, and shut it off and let it cool completely down to the touch, okay? Start it a second time and run it for about a minute, uh, slightly idling it up, go ahead and rev it a little bit, shut the saw off, and let it cool down 100%. And then the third time, go ahead and saw a piece of wood, rev the saw up and saw through it, and then again, shut it off and let it cool 100%. That's new out of the box, and I'll tell you, every time, and even in the motorcycles, the mule, I've done the same thing. By starting and shutting it off and letting it cool completely down, what you're doing is actually breaking in all the internal parts and the manual may have a break-in pr procedure as well and definitely follow that. But by starting this and shutting it off after 30 seconds, then a minute, then two minutes, and then <clears throat> after I've sawed one piece of wood and let it cool completely down, I will go ahead and saw up a, a small tree and then let the, let the uh, chainsaw cool 100%. And by doing so, after that point, you should be able to go ahead and rev it up and, and different things like that. Now in the break-in process as well, you don't want to hold a consistent throttle. You want to rev this thing up, get it sawn through a piece of wood, and then let off of it. And, and just fluctuate your throttle control for the first you know, 30 minutes of use, and chances are you'll break this saw in properly, and it's going to last you a long time, okay? That's just some information, and again, a buddy of mine, small engine mechanic, passed along to me. I've used it for every small engine that I've ever owned, and I've never had any problem out of them. So I hope that helps you.
This is the Poland Pro PP4218A. Uh, you're looking at five years of use here. The saw has done everything I've ever asked it to do, so um, I hope this is helpful for you in some way. And again, break in procedure, that's important. And the most important thing about a, a small two stroke engine is that fuel mix. If you get that fuel mix right, this equipment can last you a long time. Um, even even a thousand dollar saw if you don't have that fuel mix right you're going to burn it up i mean it's just that simple okay so <clears throat> i hope this information is good for you i want to thank you for watching i'm going to pick this wood up and take it to the woodshed you guys have a good day well at this rate guys it's going to take me all day <laughs> i'll see you on the next one <laughs>